it was pouring. We skidded out of control. I couldn't see Dora. I didn't know where she was. Somehow, I got myself out of the car. If Dora hadn't been there, you'd have burned to death, as your dog did. It's been two years since. Can you say it? Since the fire, Aaron. Why am I dreaming about it now? What's happening now? It's frightening you, making you feel helpless. You think I'm having the nightmares because I decided to divorce Adam? What I think doesn't matter. What do you think? Do you think there could be a connection? Of course, there's a connection. You're angry? I'll see you next Thursday. You're upset, Aaron. Let's talk about this. Thursday. Aaron, if the idea of divorcing Adam is upsetting you this much, you can wait. You don't have to do it now. Yes, I do. Adam, we have to talk. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm expecting Hillary Benson. We'll talk after our meeting. Adam, I, I want a divorce. Oh. I see. <clears throat> well, let's, um... Let's suppose I don't stand in your way. Where will you go? What will you do? I'll manage. Alone? You will be alone, you know. Yes. Without my loving care, my financial support, I have lawyers who will make certain you will be without my financial support. Look at you. You're a cripple. You're weak. You can't survive without me. Let's stop it. Stop your crying. Erin, there will not be a divorce. You will never, never get rid of me. Do you understand? Dr. Forbes is behind this. My diary, give that to me. It's all in here, Erin. Forbes is your lover. Oh, that's not true. Oh, yes, it is. 
He's urged you to divorce me. Well, the medical review board will take away his license for that. How dare you try to stop that divorce? I'll do more than that. I'll ruin him. Lovers. A doctor without a license and a cripple. Oh, that's nice. Hillary, come in. Uh, Mrs. Whitley is tired. Would you please take her upstairs? It's hopeless. I, I don't want to live like this anymore. Take this, honey. You'll sleep. Then what? I'll just have to wake up again. Things will look better in the morning. No. It's no use. I appreciate your time, Mrs. Whitley, and I'll be as brief as possible. Um, I understand you were asleep when your husband was killed and you did not hear the shots. Yes, it was a sleeping pill night. I, I heard nothing. And when uh, Miss Marquez woke you and told you, uh, you... Uh... Shocked. I didn't feel sad. I wanted to leave him... I, I won't pretend that I feel sad. Mind telling me why? Why what? You wanted to leave him. He used to taunt me, say that I was helpless and weak. B but that's the way he wanted me to be. Because if I was weak and helpless, then he could feel stronger and more in control. Did Dr. Forbes tell you that? Dr. Forbes helped me to see it and to see that having a handicap isn't the same thing as being weak. My husband might have been seeing another woman, Mr. Matlock. Could it be uh, the lady who visited that evening, uh, uh, Hillary Benson? No, th their relationship was strictly business. Everything's so cloudy. Dora told me that, that Adam was getting phone calls from a woman named... Shannon. That was the name the woman left on the answering machine. Shannon. Uh, did you ever talk to this Shannon? No. I don't think so. No, uh... No, I never did. I I'm sorry, Mr. Metlock. Everything is so confusing lately. It's my memory. I mean, a whole day can go by, and I, I don't remember a single minute of it. Aaron, you're just tired. Well, um, I, I'll be going. No, don't. I, I want to do anything I can. I want to help Dr. Forbes. You came to see him after you were burned in a fire. Yes. He's helped me a great deal. Do you keep a diary? Y yes, I do. Is there anything in it that would uh, help Dr. Forbes' case? It's just a journal of my dreams and feelings. Last time I saw it, Adam took it out of his drawer in his library. He did? It was very upsetting. I'm sure.
Hello? Mr. Matlock. This is Shannon Blackwell. I got your message. Uh, where are you? Meet me tonight at 11. Where? There's a dead end off the parkway at Junction 18 outside Monroe. I'll find it. Come alone. Sorry for the inconvenience, Mr. Matlock. But my life is in danger. Mr. Matlock. Yeah. I'm alone. I appreciate this. Your life's in danger. Let me start at the beginning. I met Adam Whitley when I interviewed for a modeling assignment for Elegance. I wasn't right for the magazine, but I was perfect for Adam. Well, you, you were, uh, his mistress? We were lovers. Adam paid for my apartment, my clothes, and my car. Yes. I was his mistress. And you didn't want that? I must have. I did it. I was a good model. I made a good living. But once I met Adam, that was that. He didn't want me to work, so I didn't. I lived for him. Not very smart, I know. But I loved him. And I thought that if I loved him enough, if I was patient enough, I wanted to marry him. I see. But now it's too late. I'm alone and I am in danger. It was you who called you and I, wasn't it? <clears throat> What's in that diary? Everything. Aaron's affair with Dr. Forbes. Dr. Forbes' intention to murder Adam. Adam intended to use a diary to divorce Aaron and ruin Forbes' career. And now I am next. My apartment has been ransacked, Mr. Matlock. Uh, um. I'm sorry. But I know that Aaron is trying to kill me. She is not the innocent that she pretends to be, Mr. Matlock. You've got to help me. I don't want to ruin Aaron or Dr. Forbes. I just want to leave town and forget that this part of my life ever happened. If I find it, I must be prepared to discuss it in court. You must, Dr. Forbes. It's true. The diary expressed my feelings about my husband, my marriage, even Dr. Forbes. And some of those feelings are fairly intense. But I would make it public if it would help you. I can't ask you to do that. Then I'll volunteer. You're always telling me that I'm not as fragile as I think I am. Well, let me prove you're right. Well, um, is there anything incriminating in the diary? No. OK. I, uh, I looked in your husband's desk, and I couldn't find it. Where is it? It's disappeared. Doris searched his desk, the library, the house. It, it's gone. Oh, that's great. You both tell me there's nothing incriminating in it, but it's gone. A good prosecutor would have a field day with this one. Mrs. Whitley, do you recognize this? Yes. Could you tell the jury what it is, please? It's my diary. I've marked several passages. I'd like you to read the first one to the court, please. I object, Your Honor. The defense is extremely prejudiced by the state's last-minute introduction of this evidence. In addition... We went through that in chambers, Mr. Matlock. Noted for the record, but overruled. Proceed, Mrs. Whitley. After last night, I'm sure Dr. Forbes... Mrs. Excuse me, Mrs. Whitley, we can't hear you. After last night, I'm sure Dr. Forbes feels the same love for me that I feel for him. Our only obstacle is Adam, but Lucas has promised me that he won't allow Adam to stand in our way. I, I didn't write this. But this is your diary. But this is your handwriting. Yes. Well, then let's go on. Read the second part, if you would, please. 
I must have Lucas. I've loved him from the first moment I met him five days after that terrible. Please continue. Your Honor, I object. The prosecution is harassing a witness who is under psychiatric care. Objection overruled. Please read the passage. Five days after that terrible fire. And finally, finally the last one, if you would, please. I didn't write this. This was written the day Adam Whitley was murdered. Please read it, Mrs. Whitley. Five Lucas said that tomorrow we'll be free. We've got to talk. I've made a terrible mistake. Mrs. Whitley, I know how difficult it must be for you to testify in this trial. So if there's anything I can do to make it more comfortable. Thank you, Mr. Metlock. That's very kind. You have already testified that on the night of the murder, you were heavily sedated and did not hear the gunshots. That's true. I heard nothing. So I don't believe it's possible you could have called the police, do you? No. And uh, your housekeeper testified that she was wearing one of those tape headsets and heard nothing and did not call the police. If she said so, then it's true. Dora is... Absolutely trustworthy. So no one in the house called the police. And I made some acoustical tests, and none of the neighbors heard the shots. Would you have any idea who might have called the police? No. So someone else had to have been in the house that night. And whoever that someone was not only heard the shots, but fired the shots, then removed your diary from your husband's desk and called the police. And you have no idea who might have done that. I wish I did. That same person who did all that, the killer, then sent your diary to the police, knowing it would incriminate Dr. Forbes and implicate you. That's correct, isn't it? I suppose. But those passages in my diary, I didn't write them. Mrs. Whitley. This is your handwriting, isn't it? Yes. Your Honor, I, I asked the court's permission to reread a passage that has already been read into the record. I object, Your Honor. Court's already heard this. Uh, Your Honor, this is very important. Objection overruled. Proceed, Mr. Mann. Thank you. I must have Lucas. I've loved him from the first moment I met him. Five days after that terrible... What's that word right after terrible? Just breathe that one word. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? That ever since that awful accident, you have been unable to speak or even write the word fire. It takes all that's in you to be able to hear it. Doesn't it? We need to hear your response, Mrs. Whitley. Yes. And yet, here it is, in your diary, biggest day. The word fire, written in your handwriting. Will you please just read that word for the court? I can't. I 
want you to know I'm on your side. This is going to be very hard. But I'm on your side. Your Honor, Mr. Matlock is playing games. I play games all the time, Your Honor, but not when it comes to life. Mr. Matlock, please continue, but the court would like to hear it. Yes, sir. Ms. Whitley, do you notice my suit? You notice this smudge on the arm of my suit? I wore this suit today for a very special purpose. Uh, this smudge is caused by makeup. It is makeup, a special makeup. It's used to cover blemishes of some kind or a, a burn. Look, look. It's the same shade as yours. I mean, on your arm, isn't it? Yes. But it didn't come from you. Your Honor, is there any point to this? Your Honor, I know this is confusing. I'll tell you, it's the most confusing case ever come up against me. It's taken everything I've got in my mind, plus expert advice, opinion, counsel from several qualified psychiatrists to understand. Dr. Forbes and I have discussed what I am about to do at first. He thought it was too dangerous. I hope not. I promised him that at any point he can intercede and I'll do whatever he says. The only person who can clear up all of our confusion is the person who got the makeup on my sleeve. At this point, I call Shannon Blackwell to the stand. Procedure requires that you dismiss one witness before calling another. And where is this Miss Blackwell? A moment, Your Honor. Shannon? Can you hear me? Shannon? Can you hear me? Shannon, remember the first night we met? You hid from the headlights of a passing car. That's when the makeup on your arm smudged off on my jacket. It's the same makeup that Aaron wears. During that terrible car crash and fire, Aaron's little dog was killed burned up, and so was your dog, Shannon, burned up. <laughs> Aaron has many weaknesses, and though you don't like to admit it, so do you. And somehow, this little toy dog gives you strength, doesn't it? I went to your apartment yesterday and got it for you. You want it, don't you, Shannon? Yesterday, when Aaron was testifying on the stand, Dr. Forbes realized for the first time there are two of you. Are you here, Shannon? You are Shannon, aren't you? Yes, of course. And who else? There's me. Just me. And Aaron, and maybe others. You're a multiple personality, aren't you, Shannon? I hate Aaron. She's weak. She let Adam abuse her. Well, no one abuses me. Shannon Blackwell has a future. 
Is that why you killed Adam Whitley, so that you could start over as Shannon? I will start over. Dr. Forbes killed Adam. Aaron was losing more and more time. That's because you, Shannon, were emerging more and more often. And sooner or later, Dr. Forbes would diagnose multiple personalities. Dr. Forbes would have destroyed me to save his precious Aaron. I'm sure he would have done anything he could to help both of you. But you did feel more and more threatened by Dr. Forbes. So you did something about it. You created a little, a little line of lies. You put your name and address in Adam Whitley's Rolodex in your handwriting, which is different from Aaron's. Yes, it is. You left messages on his answer machine, and just days before he was killed, you made those entries in Aaron's diary in her handwriting, which is different from yours. You knew it would cause her trouble. You hate her so much, Shannon. You were hoping she would collapse under your mischief. You wanted to be rid of Aaron, rid of her. You even got your own apartment and created yourself as I am stronger than Aaron. I deserve to be free. Did you hate your father? He wasn't my father. He was Aaron's father. No one hits me. No one beats me. I'd kill anyone who tried. He'd beat her. She'd cry and cry and crawl off into some corner and try to hide. Is, is that when Shannon first emerged? During those awful early beatings? when the weaker Aaron could no longer handle it? Is that when the stronger Shannon emerged? I didn't emerge. I am. Okay, Shannon. Tell me what happened the night of the murder. Dora gave Aaron a sleeping pill. Aaron went to sleep. But you stayed awake. Uh, I'm going to tell you something that you're going to find hard to believe. I didn't believe it for a long time. In some cases, a patient suffering multiple personalities can be given a sleeping pill. One personality will go to sleep while the other personality remains wide awake, able to take control of their mutual body, become ambulatory, walk around, conscious. I, I know that seems impossible. But here is data of actual cases. I swear to you it's true. I enter this as Defense Exhibit D. So that night, Aaron was asleep, and you were wide awake, furious with Adam. He had abused Aaron, just as her father had abused her. And your anger mounted and mounted so finally, you could contain it no longer, and you got up, went downstairs to confront him, and he, he, he said something or did something. He shouted at me, just the way Aaron's father shouted at her. He was going to hit me. He was going to take off his belt and hit me. So I went into the library, and I got his gun, and I, and I killed him. Uh, Your Honor, in light of these developments, I move that the case against Dr. Lucas Forbes be dismissed. Prosecution joins the motion. Very well. Motion to dismiss granted. 
The court also orders Shannon Blackwell, that is Aaron Whitley, held for psychiatric examination. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Matlock. Thank you, doctor. Excuse me, I have a patient to see too. <laughs>